Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Grace Hour Show, our Christian program that takes a dive into our daily challenges and helps us to learn our faith in a practical way. Uh, I am guest hosting today. My name is Pastor Matt Garrett, and I am joined with your regular Friday commentator, Pastor Shabelli, the director of our missions office here at Greater Grace World Outreach. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look. We got to the end of the week on this theme of the in-between, and today we're going to be starting to talk about the ascension, uh, the ascension of Christ, the importance of that event, how it relates to us as believers today, and how uh, believers today may feel in between uh, certain aspects of their life, certain life events, certain ministry choices or decisions that they need to make. And we're going to try to tie that all into the ascension today. So Pastor Shabelli. Acts chapter 1, good morning. Is it afternoon? It's morning. Still morning. Never know when this program is on, but it's every word different. That's right. Acts chapter 1, um, starting in verse 6, the disciples, the apostles have a question. And don't we all have questions when it comes to the timing of God and many different things? When they were come together, verse 6, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They were looking for a national restoration. They were mm -hmm. looking for Israel to be like on top of everything, like they will be at a time uh, during the millennial reign uh, when we will look to Israel in a spiritual and practical, physical way. But Jesus says something interesting to them. And maybe this can apply practically in our lives. You know, when is this going to happen? When is this going to be reconciled? When am I going to be healed? When is Jesus coming back? When, 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 when? We have a lot of questions all the time. We all do. There's nothing, I'm not saying that's anything wrong with that, but we have questions. And so didn't they. And so they asked him, is this the time you're going to restore the kingdom? And he says something interesting to them. Imagine if this was you standing there or you had a question from a pastor, you had a question from a, a child to a parent. <laughs> it's not for you to know. It's not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. And I like how there's an interesting difference here. But you shall receive power. His own power is his own exousia. Mm. It really is an authoritative word that comes from a root that really speaks of, it. the word is E-X-E-S-T-I. And it's used differently than you shall receive power, which is dunamis, mm -hmm. personal power. But it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But, and I like this, yeah. you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. And I like this. Mm -hmm. You know, when we think about witnessing, uh, are we witnessing unto us? Some people go out and they preach their church, which I understand is okay. I'm not saying it's sin, but I'm a witness unto Christ. I'm a witness unto Christ. You should be witnesses unto me, both. And thank God for that word, both. Yeah. Because some people would just be stuck in Jerusalem, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he has spoken these things, while they beheld... He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward <laughs> heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, <laughs> You men of Galilee, <laughs> why stand ye gazing up yeah, into yeah. heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. In other words, they're asking about the times uh, of restoration. When is this going to take place? Mm -hmm. when, when will this happen? When will we restore the kingdom? And it's not for you to know. It's simply for you to go. It's not for you to know. It's simply for you to go. We can easily get caught up in what we think is the plan of God. We, we may know his purpose, and that's to glorify himself, that we would glorify God, but the exact plan. And we are all creatures like that. We all want to know when things are going to happen. You oh, know? Yeah. When is this job going to start? When is this uh, situation going to happen? When is she going to say yes to my proposal in marriage? <laughs> you know, when is this going to happen? When am I going to be healed? When, 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 when? we got a lot of whens. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, it's not for you to know. Imagine if you were these 11 men, mm -hmm. and this is what you were told. I'm going, and it's not for you to know. Okay, what do we do? Well, here simply is the answer. You shall receive power. And when you receive power, you're going to know that it's more important to go and not be too concerned when Jesus is coming back. Some people, all they do is study. 
uh, the return of Christ, yeah. you know, and whatnot. And they, they make decisions based on that. I'm not saying it's, it, it is important to know that for sure, mm-hmm. to understand that. But God has not put that into us in a way that we know exact days, times of years. We can know the times and the seasons, maybe uh, an, an era, an epoch in time, but it's not for you to know. It's for you to receive power and be a witness. This is important. So this is the message at the ascension. As yeah. he's being lifted up and he's taken out of their sight, something absolutely miraculous. Yeah. Resurrection from the dead, miraculous. Uh, the cross, miraculous. Resurrection from the dead, miraculous. Ascension, miraculous. This is incredible. And they're seeing all these things take place. He's with them for three and a half years. Then he is crucified. And then he is buried. Then he rises again. And now after a number of days, he's going to ascend into heaven and give them a commission. He gave them the Great Commission, which I call the Grace Commission, Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, uh, and John 20 and 21. Yep. I call it the Grace Commission because it's only great because it's a grace message. Yeah. And so uh, you shall receive power. And what will you receive power to do? To just perform miracles, power to you know elevate yourself in the Christian world, to have a better rep- reputation, recognition. What shall you receive power to do? Receive power for healing alone? Receive power for whatever. What is it that you receive power for? You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. witnesses. Yep. By the way, do you know what the <clears throat> word witness is in the Greek? Mart- martyrus. M-A-R-T-U-S. Oh, wow. Martyr. Wow. You shall receive wit- You shall be witnesses unto me. Unto me. And how many people are out there, and, and I'm not saying it's sin, but maybe they're, they're preaching something else. They're preaching the return of Christ. They're preaching their church. They're preaching their denomination. But you'll be witnesses unto me, the person of Christ. And I like the word both because it took them out of Jerusalem. You can see Peter later on, and you can see these men as they go into all the world. Thomas ends up being a missionary in India. Mm -hmm. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. By the way, I wonder why, Pastor Matt, Uh he skipped Galilee. Did you ever notice that? You men of Galilee? Yeah. He never mentioned Galilee. Yeah. Galilee wasn't an option. No. They were Galileans. Prophet has no honor in his yeah, hometown. Yeah, it's like, you're going, you're going. I'm not saying that the, the, this shouldn't have been somebody that preached in Galilee, but not in particular them mm-hmm. and whatnot. So you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And that's why we have this amazing commission. That's why we have a Bible school to train people to become witnesses in the whole world. Yeah. This is so key. I just came back from a, a resurrection service. Uh, my niece passed, and uh, mm. three days, and just kind of like listening to people's words, especially so-called religious people, and really, oh, I wish they would learn to give hope, give no hope. But really, and she was a witness. Maybe she was only here thirty-one years, but in the thirty-one years, or when she got saved, from the time she got saved, be a witness. This mm. is so important. This is so key. We go out on evangelism, and that's just. A, being a witness isn't just evangelism. It's the life I live. Right. Maybe I'm at the shop. Maybe I'm uh, I'm an accountant. Maybe I'm working in business. Maybe I'm a nurse or a doctor. Maybe I'm whatever it may be. I'm to be a witness. Yeah. This is a witness. This is so important that we are witnesses unto me, not unto myself. Right. I want to tell you what you know what I'm doing with my Christian life. You know. Wow. Well, you wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for Jesus Christ living exactly. in you. Exactly. Yep. So witnesses <laughs> unto me. And I love the both. It doesn't doesn't just say my my Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Some people are just stuck with this hometown mission. Mm-hmm. And thank you that you're doing a hometown mission. Right. Yes. But don't you think it would be possible for somebody to go not just to Jerusalem but also Judea? Right. How about Samaria? Skip Galilee? How about the uttermost part of the world? This morning I was talking to um, some of our people that are in Asia from one particular country, and they were all in Vietnam, and we had about the I think 30 Vietnamese believers there in a session we did this morning. And not, not by the way, not just the voice only, not just the iPad or whatever you call these devices that we use. <laughs> huh? What do we call them? You men of <laughs> technology? Smartphones. Smartphones, Smartphones sure. all kinds of things, right? But foot, 
phones. No, the foot, using the foot. <laughs> yes. Uh, John said, I want to see you in second and third John face to face. Face to face. Yeah. And I know that's not always possible for everybody, but it's got to be possible for some people to go face to face. Mm -hmm. Imagine. Uh, when God called me to Africa in 1986, I, I said, I'll send you a video. No, no, I'm going to my feet. How beautiful are the video? No, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel? Amen. So these are witnesses. And so this is, these are the last words. I mean, we, I know we look at Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, yep. uh, and Acts yep. 1. Yep. Uh, we look at the other three as the last words of Jesus. Yeah. But these are the last words. Yeah. Be a witness. Be a witness. What do they come in the Bible school for? As as a person who's directing the Bible school, uh, you want them to ultimately become a witness wherever they go. Yes, doesn't mean it doesn't make a difference. And you don't have to be. Uh, by the way, everybody's a missionary who has Christ. Okay, yes. I get a little bit tired of this thing, you know. Uh, and I know it's it's not wrong that people say it, but uh, you know, you're on the mission field. You know, well, get, everybody's on the mission field. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed mm -hmm. that we are uh, people who are born again, born from above, and we are on the earth? Yeah. So Pil we're all on pilgrims. the mission field. Yeah. You're on the mission field, wherever you may be. Mm -hmm. It's great. So we got. Are we looking for comments? Anybody calling us? We can. We can go to the comments if they come. Are there in. any? <laughs> Please feel free uh, to write in if you're watching us on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. We are ready to receive your comments. We also have a phone number that you can call us at uh, toll free one eight hundred three three eight seven zero six zero or the local number here in Baltimore four ten four eight three thirty seven hundred. Uh, I like that uh, you mentioned all the instances of the Great Commission or the Grace Commission, as you put it, because all of these verses are all saying the same thing. Right. They are all giving the instructions to the disciples from Christ himself, his mouth, his words, straight to them right before he goes up. Right. A lot of people look at Acts chapter 1, and they don't necessarily see uh, that the words in Matthew 28, the right. the what's going on in Mark 16, what's happening in Luke 24, they don't see that that's all the same thing happening at the same time. It's different perspectives. Right. Different people are writing about it. Right. Luke even has two separate perspectives on it when he talks about Acts. Um, but there's like really no question as to what they can go and do mm -hmm. at this point. And this is this is my favorite part, and, and you, uh, you already pointed it out, but whenever Jesus, <laughs> whenever Jesus does ascend... Immediately, immediately, two angels appear or two mm -hmm. men stood by them in white apparel and said, what are you guys looking at? <laughs> like, did you yeah. hear everything he said? Did you hear the message that he gave? Did he write the vision plainly on the table for you to run, run right. with it in Habakkuk chapter two? Right. I think he did. Christ was very clear. And, and you go back to the other in-between times that the disciples found themselves in. Whenever he, um, whenever he was... Uh, crucified and and in the tomb, like did he not speak to them about the promise of being mm -hmm. three days in the belly of the whale, sure. like Jonah? Like they still had a message to give to people. They still had something they could talk to others about. They still had a way to. So this Greek word for witness, I, I forget the way you Martis. pronounce it, but it's basically -R. martyr. It's like laying down your life yeah. to give the message. You're right. laying down your life to give the message. What has Jesus taught you? Lay down your life, give that message. Whether it's by the way you live your life. Like John the Baptist, he lived mm -hmm. his life a very specific way to prepare the way for Christ to come. Uh, or these disciples who would actually eventually go and be martyred for this message. And you know what's interesting is like, you know, some people could easily get caught up with what God did with them, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, or they had a vision from God, mm -hmm. you know, and, and whatnot. They were told not to be occupied with his going up. Yes. But to be occupied with them going out. Yeah. Am I occupied with his going up or should we be occupied with we going out? Mm -hmm. And this is the key. And if it wasn't for the fact that he ascended, they would have no message to bring mm -hmm. out into all the world. But this is so important. And why is it that you see uh, so few people are involved, so few churches, so few movements are involved with world evangelism? It's really interesting to me what takes place. I've been looking at this for like, since 1986, and wondering what's going on. Actually, since 1976. The day I got saved, I went out and with a Bible and started telling people about Christ. Wow. January 6, 1976. I didn't know what I was talking about. Awesome. I had no idea, to be honest with you. Yeah. I just knew that God had done something in my life. That moment, you, know? you received power. And, and I received, and I, and I'll tell you something. I, I, I really wonder if God can talk to people who do not care about lost souls in the gospel. Mm. I, I wonder whether they're really hearing from the Holy Spirit and whatnot. But this is so key. And you're not going, you're not doing this by yourself. 
what did he say? The Holy Spirit will come, what, upon you? Yes. Right. Not just, to, he'll not just be upon you, but the Holy Spirit will be in you. Yes. In other words, receive ye the Holy Spirit, John 20. Yeah. They receive the Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit upon them is the power, the with abiding power of the presence of God upon them. Mm -hmm. So they could move in these different directions. Mm -hmm. So they would have power. And they're going to face opposition. Sure. You want to face opposition with your own ability? Or you want to face it with God's ability? Right. I mean, right away, they're thrown in. I mean, they're just jail after jail, after problem <laughs> after problem. Yeah. I don't want problems. I want to be a Christian with no problems. I don't ever <laughs> want to have to face any trial or test at all. Oh, come on. <laughs> Will you? We, it's about time you grew up, you know, mm -hmm. and there should be some Christian growth. Paul said to the Corinthians, you are yet babes, you're carnal babes. Yep. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. Yep. They, there was no growth. Were they saved? Yes, but no Christian growth. So here's the church, and it just sits in its own little environment all of its life with a Christian, and you've got an amazing message. And mm -hmm. God's power and God's life and God's grace gives you an opportunity, and God will put people in front of you. Oh, yes. He'll put people in front of you so you can speak to them about Christ. Somebody came up to me at the... Um, uh, the wake, they call them wakes, you know, or funeral. They said to yeah. me, are you still doing that Christian thing? Wow. I'm like, well, first of all, it's not a thing. It's a life. Mm -hmm. Are you still doing that Christian thing? This guy was, uh, was a really interesting person, too. I won't go into his details <laughs> of his life. You know, I felt like saying, you still doing that devil's thing? But oh, I didn't. No. I, I held my mouth. <laughs> I was going to say that. But, you know, he's still doing that Christian thing all these years? Because he remembers uh, 1975, mm -hmm. you know, and he remembers what took place 76 late the next year. And uh, it's interesting. And we are witnesses. And so I have an opportunity to be a witness. By the way, you, it, with some people, you don't have to even say anything. Mm -hmm. They know who you were before, mm -hmm. and they know who you are and what you're doing now. And sometimes they don't even want to talk. I, yep. I did find a lot of people avoiding me too. There. Sure. You know, that's going to happen, yeah. which is fine. I understand that, you know. But uh, really, uh, these kind of things bring people to a mental awareness of, What's next? Like this person passed and you too will pass. Mm -hmm. What's next? And mm -hmm. so it's vitally important for us to be witnesses of this entire life of Christ, his death on the cross, the finished work, the blood of Christ, the, uh, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension. Yeah. This is, this is so important. Because really our life on earth is an in-between time. Yeah. It's like we, we are coming from God and hopefully we are going back to God whenever we... Mm -hmm. and this life. And we have an actual message. We have a way to witness to people whenever events like this take yeah, place. Yeah. And like you said, we have, uh, we have hope for them. We have, we are acquainted with grief and sorrow in a sense to mm -hmm. the, to the point where we can say, but there's a, a, a brighter dawn coming in the future. It's a great hope. Yes. And you know, this, this is the beginning. This was the beginning, you know, and all of a sudden these 11 men, I'm not counting Judas because he's gone. Mm -hmm. He's out of the picture. Yep. You know? But these 11 <clears throat> men, you know. Yeah. I, I, was, I know what's interesting to me too. Judas was at the Passover, but he wasn't at the communion. He was at the religious yeah. Passover feast, but when it was time for communion, he was gone. Yeah. You, could, you can't have communion with Judas around. No. You know? Well, and he so, had the devil inside him. He, yeah. The devil can't take communion. Can't take, yeah. no, no. And so, and here they are and they're preparing. And what's going to take place now? There's going to be this incredible... Mm -hmm. revival in Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's going to be thousands, not Pouring just like out. five people got saved, but, you know, 3,000, 5,000. Yeah. And it just keeps growing. Yeah. And they, they got so concerned. We t we keep telling them not to preach and teach in this name. Yeah. And they won't listen. We put them in jail, they come out. We put them in jail again, they come out. So <laughs> I, I think after a while, you just got to give up on this situation and say, like, you know what? Uh, we find ourselves to be fighting against God. Yeah. So this was an incredible time. Imagine, uh, and we are we are there spiritually speaking as we read the Bible. Mm -hmm. We can really understand that Jesus just rose from the dead and then he ascended into heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. Thank God for that because he oh, ever yeah. lives to make intercession for us. Amen. Yes. Uh, Hebrews seven twenty five. Yep. And he is our advocate in First John two one. Mm -hmm. I like the two things there. The what the ascension actually results in. He's he's. Uh, Interceding for us. Yes. That's in our weakness. Yeah. Intercession of weakness. Then he, when we sin, he's an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous. Mm -hmm. we, we can confess our sin to him. Yeah. So he's advocate and he's also intercessor yeah. there. And so he's at the right hand. So when we're weak, we go to him. He's interceding for us. When we sin, 
and we don't want to, but when we sin, he's an advocate before the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, when I'm not righteous. Right. So this is incredible. So this is how, how this is all beginning. Yeah. And you'll see this explosion take place. But you know what? I like how it says a number of times in, in Acts 1 and Acts 2, they were of one accord. Mm-hmm. They had one mind. One yeah. accord uh, is a very interesting word. And it, it, it's H-O-M-O-T-H-U-M-A-N. D-O-N. But it, it really means they had one mind and one spirit. Yeah. They had one mind and one spirit, and they were going to now act with one activity. Yeah. They were going to act as one. And so they're, with, they're in one accord, and then here comes this rushing wind from heaven. <laughs> so here they are. They're in one accord in prayer yeah. and in preparation. And you know that uh, what, was, what was taking place. They were picking another disciple and all of that. They were in prayer and they were in preparation, and then comes God. You know, a lot of people, all of us at times, we don't want to spend the time in uh, preparation and prayer yeah. and whatnot. We want to just jump right into it. We want sure. to just jump right in to the uh, Acts 2. Forget Acts 1. Yep. We're going right to Acts 2. You know, We want activity. Yep. And it's all about like walking with God. Mm-hmm. This is so important. You know, um, I, I know you prayed before you got married. Yes, and if you a lot. Yeah, yep. God just loved you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we did, you know. But you know, we we pray, we prepare, we think things through. And this mm-hmm. is what's going on. And then the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were one accord in one place. Yeah. I like that too. Isn't that interesting? One accord in one place. You know, rather than people saying, "By the way, what about these people that think they don't need a church?" Oh, really? Yeah. So I wonder why it's in the Bible. I often wonder about like the Ephesians epistle and the book of Acts, and there was a church in Jerusalem. Yeah. There was churches in Judea, Samaria, and in Galilee eventually, and then yeah. all the world. So, And all they wanted to do was gather together. Yeah, all, gather that, together. All the time they wanted to gather together. That's what a church is. You're in communion with mm-hmm. one another. You're in communion with the head, headship of Jesus Christ. And don't you think, too, that this idea of ascension also really speaks to me about the finished work? Oh, absolutely. This is so key. Yes. This is his place. Yeah. He's ascended to the right hand of the Father. Now, Mm -hmm. because he finished the work at Calvary, Mm -hmm. he's there interceding for us as our advocate. Mm -hmm. And the work is finished. Yeah, And they're not going out to try to finish the work. They're operating from the finished work and now bringing the gospel into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. When when Christ ascended, it says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8, when he ascended, he took his rightful place at the right Mm -hmm. hand of God the Father. When he took his rightful place... He was able to take, I think this is in Revelation chapter 5 and also Revelation chapter 19. He holds the keys of death in his hands, which he did not have before this point. Now he has the keys of death in his hands. He led captivity captive. He defeated sin, death, and the devil the Mm -hmm. moment that he sat down at the right hand of God. And from that point forward, he's sending us the power to go and witness of the work that he has done on the world's behalf so that people would be drawn to him. Should we sing that song? There's victory in Jesus. <coughs> okay, Sebastian, I know. Okay, I understand. Come on, Pastor Shabelli, let it rip. <laughs> victory in Christ. Yes. And I think that is so important that you see how this Acts, the book of Acts starts. It starts, they're there together. They're yeah. one mind, one accord, and they're going to just walk with God. And then an explosion takes place. Yes. You know, yeah. Something happens. And you wonder, like, I, I know that when churches have unity and they're in one place, that God's going to use it. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. So ascension, speaking of the finished work, he's ascended to his place right next to the Father, the right hand of the Father. Yeah. Is ascension. And, he, and he's there interceding for you. Yes. I don't care how weak you are. He ever lives to make intercession. Amen. I don't care what, what your failure is, what your sin is. Paul's murdering Christians. By the way, I mean, think about it. The Bible, I think 50-something percent, if not close to 60% of the Bible, was written by three murderers. Mm-hmm. Moses, first five books. Yep. David, a lot of Samuel, Psalms, Chronicles, Kings, mm-hmm. and then Saul of Tarsus. Yeah. And so forgiven, the cross, the finished work, forgiven, grace and mercy. And then now God's going to use these these people. Do we have any? We have some comments. Yeah, we got there. a few comments. Here we go. We got one from Han. Even if you are sick and in bed, you still can be a witness. You can Amen. use technology to reach people. Absolutely, God gives you power in a myriad of different wa- different ways. He Amen. can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. 
Marion comments in with the timeless quote from Pastor <laughs> Stephen, souls, souls, souls. 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 Uh, and, uh, yep, in Jesus' name, amen. I um, like this. Yeah, there's a yeah. prayer for Daniel Eaton. Yeah, let's do that. Pray, uh, He's in York Hospital. He has swelling on the brain. Oh, no. Tumor. Wow. Father, we really pray for yes. Daniel Eden. He's such a great man of God, such a great witness of Christ. Yes. We pray for absolute healing, mm. God, of this brain tumor, that you take it away. You would remove it in yes. Jesus' name. Remove the swelling on the brain from mm-hmm. a tumor. God, just touch him today as the as the body, the church around the world prays for Daniel Eden, and not just now, but we will continue to pray for him. Mm. You would touch him. We thank you that you hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Oh, that's big. Yeah, we'll be thinking of you, Daniel. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, ascension. Ascension. The in-between time. So it's really interesting because the moment Christ ascends, the disciples actually find themselves in another in-between time. They're mm-hmm. waiting, but I love the way you, you portrayed it. The, the way that they're waiting is they're in one accord. Mm-hmm. They're in one place. They're together. They're united. They have the instruction. They have the message. They have... Um, an idea of what's to happen next. And so what are they doing? Like Psalm 4610 says to be still and know that he is Mm -hmm, God. mm -hmm. And that's an opportunity for us to take time and reflect about what's going on and what's going to take place next. You also have Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Is it chapter, um, wait on the Lord? Uh, Is that Isaiah 30? Isaiah 40, the very end of the chapter. It's like, if you wait on God in these moments, these in-between times, you are going to receive strength. You are going to receive power. Mm -hmm. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon them in Pentecost? (laughs) They (laughs) They are renewed with strength and they start running. They start running and the work of God starts running and it, it catches fire and it goes from place to place to place. They couldn't believe it because here's these 11 men that were hiding behind a closed door. Yeah. <laughs> you know what happened though? Jesus walked through the door. I mean, he didn't open it. He no. walked through it. He just he walked just right through up. the wall. You know, hello, <laughs> guess who's here, you know? And and that's that's amazing, you know? Yeah. And this this whole idea of um, of what being in one accord in one place with the ascended Christ what that produces, what that motivates. And yeah. you can see these men, they're just in the middle of Jerusalem, mm-hmm. of all places. Mm-hmm. Like, why don't they pick someplace else, you know? They, they're they going right from the place where Jesus was crucified. Yes. Tried, I mean, it was, it was very well known what was taking place. <clears throat> and I like how it says, it keeps saying uh, a number of times, you know what the ascension does in Peter's life personally? What? He stands up and preaches. Nice. Is him? Him? The guy that's running, the guy, a little girl is pulling on the side of his <laughs> leg. Like, weren't you with Jesus of Nazareth? Yeah. Go away, go away, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, constantly, she's just right there. And like, God can use so many little things to remind us of really what our call and our purpose is. And so you see Peter continually standing up. I mean, the first, the first 10 chapters until we see Paul come on the scene and yeah. then Acts 13 through the end, we see much of Acts occupied with the life of Paul. Mm-hmm. But you see Peter, and you see Peter and Paul together, and like you, you look at these two men, and you see that uh, they are living an ascended life. Yeah. They're, they're living the finished work life, a life from above. Set your affections, Colossians 3, 1 through 4, set your affections yes. on things above, not on things of the earth, for you're, you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. And that, that's amazing. You're dead. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I'm so worried about you're dead. Uh, I got I got so many emotional problems. You're dead. You know, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about this situation. The marriage. You're dead. You know, I mean, really, yeah. you are dead, and your life is hid. And I love how this reads: with Christ in God. Yes. What could be any better than that? Right. You're with Christ, and you're in God. And so they go forward, and they make such a difference. Now, why is it today? Hmm. I think. Things happen today, and there's such problems in people's lives and all of our lives at times because we don't understand that it's a finished work and we are ascended. Yeah. We're seated with Christ. Yeah, you know? already. Ephesians I, I, might, 2, 6. I, I am uh, physically and practically personally seated yeah. right here in this grace hour place. That's right. This, this room. But that's your in, seat right in, there. Yeah, but we're seated <laughs> above. We're seated above. Amen. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's the, that's the spiritual resurrection that's taking place when we receive Christ as our personal mm-hmm. Savior. And this is so key. 
that you can have an ascended life beginning today. If you're yes. listening to this program and you're not born again, all you have to do is, it's not going to church no. alone. It's not baptism. It's not uh, having a certain gift or not. It's you saying yes to who Jesus is and what he has done on the cross and asking him to come into your life with a simple prayer yeah. based upon a decision. By the way, a prayer doesn't save anybody. It's a decision to say the prayer. This is key. You know, oh, yeah. We oh, think yeah. it's just a prayer. No. But it's I make a willful decision to say yes to God. Yeah. And this is so key. You can do that even right now. Jesus, come into my life. Live in me. I believe you are God, the Son, the Son of God. You are the Son of Man. You are the perfect God who became perfect man. I receive what you have done at the cross. Your shed blood can save me today. I trust in you as my personal Savior. And today I say yes to God. Amen. Amen. And you might not, it's not, it's not about a feeling, it's no. about a truth of the Bible. Absolutely. You know? Sometimes somebody said, I didn't feel any different when I got saved. Well, what, is, what does it say you have to feel any yeah. different? <laughs> it's like you've been changed by God. It's yeah. a personal decision. We have a lot more people up there that are chiming in. Yeah, we have another another woman uh, saying, yes, total healing for Daniel and for all the support that Tracy needs. Yeah, right. we're, we're praying for Tracy as well. And then there's this. Oretta. Oretta, good day to our faithful pastors, my great high priest, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, interceding for me, his child. And I hope always, she's gonna, always, always. And she's always praying for us. Yes, thank Especially you. I, when I go out with her grandson oh. on Saturdays on evangelism. Is that Tori? We always, we always collect, we always call her oh, on I love the phone that. And, and say that. So thank you for being such a faithful witness. And she commented again. She said, amen, hallelujah, it, seated in Jesus Christ in, in heavenly, heavenly places. places. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes we don't we don't recognize that. We don't realize that in a practical way. Yeah. I'm in this trial. Well, okay, you are, but you're in Christ, mm. you know? Yes. I, I once preached a message called, Jesus wins, I am in, no more sin. Nice. What a good message. That is. Jesus wins. You always have these great I am play in, on words. And there's no more sin. Yeah. And in other words, like sin, oh, we do sin, but as far as is on, on the record, no. Jesus yeah. wins, I am in, no more sin. Can you say that fast seven times? No. No. Nope, try it. Absolutely not. No. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like the simple truths that we learn. You know, sometimes I think every pastor that's in training to be a pastor should teach Sunday school, teach kids. Oh yeah. Cause you got to make yeah. it like really like so direct and so clear, so simple, so single and yes. simple and precise. Yep. Keep it uh, simple. This is key. I think David Livingstone said the key to his mission in Africa was he kept it scriptural. He kept it uh, single and he kept it suited to the people. Nice. I remember the three S's because those are, those are initials of my name. Yeah. So keep it scriptural, scriptural, keep it s single, single, and keep and it suited. suited to the people that they can identify Beautiful. with it. Yeah. Yes. Really important. Like when you know, uh, I once preached a message and I realized I was uh, in a group of people that had cannibal tendencies. Oh boy. And I preached a, a message and I realized I should. This is not good. I preached, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Uh -oh. And I thought to myself, uh -oh. after I preached, I said, bow your heads. And when I, you told, I get said to the driver, there. get in the car. <laughs> I got to get, get in the car. We're driving out of here because they might take this literally, you know? He yeah. said, oh, there's no such thing as people like that around. Well, come take a trip with me. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. So how, how does someone, how does someone like Livingstone's quote, how does someone keep it? Uh, okay, what are the three words? Scriptural. Scriptural. So scriptural is not as hard because you have a you have plethora of, of resources in front of you. Scriptural, single, and suited. suited. to the people. Like, in other words, single means just a, a, a focus. Yeah. Okay, a, I have a single eye sure. towards God. So if I'm really controlled by the scriptures and I'm a man or a woman of God in the scriptures, a teenager in the scriptures, then I'm going to have a, it's going to develop a single eye. Yes. I'm going to just see it. Of course, I'm going to see other things in life, but I'm going to see that which is so clear. And then suited to the people, there's where faith comes in and an identification with people. And the work like, of the yeah, Holy Spirit. I, I'm not yeah. going to pray to, I'm not going to meet somebody in the street and talk to them about Christ and start using Greek and Hebrew words and, you know, exegeting verses. Yeah. You know, come on, like, knock it off. Will you? you ever heard of the exousia? <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, yeah, uh, they're, look, they're looking at you like, what, what are you talking about? Do you about? know that Jesus reigns yeah. above all, everything in the in yeah. the entire world? Yeah, he's above it all. Suited to the people. Yes. Like, in other words, where people can identify and we can explain it. And certainly, Dr. Stevens was great at this. He could challenge you mm -hmm. to take another step 
towards uh, really knowing the word of God yeah. by, by using certain words and phrases. Yeah. But he always explained it very clearly. Yeah. So you knew what he was talking about. So even the, the, the youngest person, like I think a pastor or a preacher ought to be able to hit everybody in the congregation. Sure. There's a new believer. There's a person that's been saved for 40 years. There's somebody that's going through a trial. Mm -hmm. There's somebody that's got overwhelmed by sin in some area. Mm -hmm. Young people, older people, middle-aged people like me. Uh, <laughs> but no, we, hey, I, I didn't yeah. say it. I didn't yeah. say it. Middle age, yeah. What is middle age? Depends on how long you're going to live. We're going to live forever. That's so right. I don't know what middle age is when it comes to living forever. That's right. But the ascension, and how, and let's see practically, can you ascend out of your situation, your trouble, mm. and see Christ in it? See, that's ascension in the practical way. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to fellowship with God in the midst of my trial. Mm -hmm. I'm being stoned to death in Acts 7, but I see Jesus seated at the what? Right, right hand, hand of the, of the Father. Father. Yeah. I have an ascended mindset, and that ascended mindset puts me uh, seeing Christ in the middle. Is it the stones that I'm are hitting my body, or is it Jesus Christ I'm seeing? So maybe this marriage is not working out too well. Do you see Christ in the marriage? Mm -hmm. See an ascended Christ in your marriage. Maybe you're at a job and you're you're surrounded by unbelievers with vulgar mouths. Mm -hmm. How about seeing an ascended Christ and speaking his very pure, clear words mm -hmm. at the job, you know? But you're seeing an ascended Christ. Yeah, they might mock you. They may say things. I worked in a prison for 12 years. You know what it's like? Who's worse, the guards or the inmates? I don't even know. It was unbelievable. <laughs> but you had to have what I call spiritual earplugs. Yeah. And although you're going to hear things, it's yeah. not going to affect. It's not going to, I like it, it's not going to sink down. Sure. So we need an ascended life. We need this ascended life in a practical way. Mm -hmm. Maybe something tragic happens, like what I was just involved with this weekend. Mm -hmm. But you see an ascended life that this young lady is in heaven. Yeah. That's the ascended life. Yeah. I can look at the illness. I can look at the what would consider the tragedy, of course, mm -hmm. but I can see an ascended life, mm -hmm. a person with Christ. And by the way, you're here 70, 80 years or whatever that is. I hate to say 70. I went by that a long time ago. You know? <laughs> I'm 70, 77 now. Uh -oh. But, you know, but forever. Yes. Forever. We're with Jesus Christ forever. That's like 100 years, 200, 1,000, 10,000, 10 million. It's, it's in, you can't count it. So that's the ascended life. Yeah. So am I, what am I going to do? Am I going to make decisions for what is happening today? I know that we have to make practical decisions. Sure. Like I don't, I don't like, I don't like macaroni with broccoli on it. You know, I like macaroni with tomato sauce. <laughs> but so I can, I can just have an ascended life and make, make that broccoli taste like tomato. No, I can't do that. <laughs> but I, I, have, I, I want to have an ascended life in the practical details of yes. life, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? What's going on here? Yeah. What's happening? It's like maybe there's a problem in a marriage. Have an ascended life. See your wife in Christ. Yes. See your husband in Christ. The kids are, you can't believe these kids. Huh, really? See them in Christ. Have an ascended life's view. And this is so important. I'm not doing well. Well, you're doing very well in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you're concentrating on the below, the earth, yeah. the situations that are going on all the time, and that's your focus, no wonder people get like, upset they got to take pills they got to take something to, to cure their anxiety I listen to somebody yesterday say i gotta find a pill i gotta find a pill i gotta find a pill you know i gotta find some pills you know, yeah. this is too much for me you know yeah. i'm like hello yeah hello you know have an ascended life yes have communion with the father you have yes. you so right after the ascension christ is promising another to come to us holy it's the spirit. holy spirit yes because we have the holy spirit as believers we can operate in this ascended life. It's Absolutely. the Holy Spirit that teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We can't understand spiritual things without the Spirit of God being in it. Right. So as we open our word, as we go to God in prayer, as we uh, go and sit under preaching and teaching, as we go out and speak to people about Jesus, about the message, about what he called us to witness to, the Holy Spirit fills us. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth in John chapter is Absolutely. it 16? Yeah, John yeah. 16, 13. The ascended life. And he never speaks of anything other than what right. he's heard. Yeah. So he only speaks of what Christ sent him to speak, which is the word of God. Right. And he's always giving us this opportunity to, to go, like the, the preacher in the pulpit who has to hit every single audience member. Yeah. That only happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God. Because the Spirit can make everything 
uh, hit each individual exactly the way that it needs to hit them. Absolutely, because uh, the whole book of Acts is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's yeah. the ministry of the Spirit of God. And uh, yet people have somehow so misinterpreted that, that oh, they've, man. they've categorized that. Well, if the Spirit of God is, we'll have this gift. Yeah. The Spirit of God will do this. You know yeah. what? The Spirit of God can make you very patient. The Spirit of God sure. will lead you in a particular way. Mm-hmm. The Spirit of God will speak to us. Spirit of God. By the way, the Holy Spirit, here's a couple of things the Holy Spirit does that a lot of people somehow, I mean, they, they know this, but like, do I concentrate on this? The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. Yes. So does that mean that the Holy Spirit would understand the Bible? Yes. Absolutely. And so all I need be spirit filled <laughs> and I can understand the Bible. Then number two, the Holy Spirit shed the love of God abroad in my Amen. heart. Romans now I 5, can 5. love people, love my enemies, love my life mm-hmm. because the Holy Spirit is shed abroad mm-hmm. in my heart. Mm-hmm. That's that by the way, did you ever realize that you and I are the mission of the Holy Spirit? If, you know, we yeah. understand about the mission the Holy Spirit has here yeah. in the book of Acts and in our lives daily here. But one great objective mm. is me. Yes. You know, the Holy Spirit shedding the love of God abroad in my heart, mm-hmm. in my heart, so that I could love with God's love, an unconditional, unending, unlimited love. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit, this is where it, it, be, it begins. Yeah. Uh, this is the key. Now, now the, I love the Father sent the Son, the Son sent the Spirit, yeah. the Spirit sends us. Yes. Yeah, that's really great. It's beautiful. The Father sent the Son, the Son sent the Spirit. The Spirit send us, and they're all in the in the business of sending. Yes, and the Father says, "I'm sending the Son." Sends and the Son says, "I'm sending the Spirit." The Spirit says, "I'm sending the Church." It's never about yeah. knowing. Yeah, it, you it's said this going. at the very yeah. beginning. It's never yeah. about no, it's about going. Like you go back to the beginning of the Bible. What is what is the tree that we're not supposed to eat of? Knowledge knowing, good. yeah, knowing. <laughs> it's the tree of knowing. I gotta you... know everything. <laughs> Where are you sending me, God? Yeah. What am I? What am I doing? You know what's what's happening? When, when is that going to happen? You How know, about yeah, uh, we are creatures of knowledge? We have to know everything. Abraham's servant, while he was in the way, the Lord led him. The Lord led him. Yeah, it's about and, going. And Abraham, in, in uh, Hebrews eleven eight, he went out not knowing where he was going. Yes, I mean, I know where I'm <laughs> yeah. going. I know I'm going to Africa soon. You oh, know? awesome! Yeah. I know where I'm going. Yeah, I know I got to go to the airport. I know I got to get on an airplane. He went out. He had no idea. Right. You're going to let God lead you. Just get oh, away from your no. people. What? <laughs> no, that's too crazy. Oh, no. Let God lead me? Really? Going, not knowing. Like when we go out, you're welcome to come out anytime on a Saturday morning or any other time that we evangelize mm-hmm. and meet here at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. And we can go out. I don't know where we're going. We don't know who we're going to talk to either. We have no idea. But I do know one thing. I know God. And yeah. God knows God. First of all, God knows me. Yeah. I know God. And uh, it's such an opportunity. And though this is what Acts 1 is all about. This is what the ascension, the ascension should come forth with the feet moving. Yes. Jesus goes up. I like this. This is simple, isn't it? Jesus goes up and we go out. We go out. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Jesus goes up and he's in and now we, we go out. It's an in and out deal. Okay? Yeah. He's in. We're Not out, in we and out, out burger. Yeah. In and out in with and the gospel. Out, <laughs> in and out with with the gospel message. Yeah. And that's, that's such a great thing. How many minutes do we have left? One minute We got or a less? minute minute and a half. We got a couple comments from Carol here. Also, uh, someone wrote in thanking you. Uh, they are listening uh, from a different country. I can't see it anymore. But I Carol wrote in, there is authority in Christ's ascended life, and we are seated with him with the same authority above demonic powers. Praise God for the simple explanation of the word through the Holy Spirit. Uh, thank you, pastors, for this beautiful subject of sharing Christ with others and living in him daily in every situation in the details of life. Uh, we cannot yeah. live without the ministry of God's Holy Spirit. Praise God for his gift. Amen. Yeah. That's why that's why we have this program, because the Holy Spirit has been the source of it and mm-hmm. is leading in it. Mm-hmm. And we'll continue to do so. Yeah. We'll continue to do so. Yes. Know? And then uh, Melissa writes in, uh, quoting the passage for the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5. 22-23. Let's read that, and then we will call it a show. Yes. Galatians 5, 22-23. Uh, for the fruit of the Spirit is this. <clears throat> Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Uh, and this is what Christ has given us Amen. the moment he ascended. The be a great subject for uh, Grace Hour. 
oh, yeah. some week, you know, the oh, yeah. fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, why not? Uh, all the fruits of the Spirit. And you go. You also connect with Ephesians 5. Oh, yeah. Great day today. Great day. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us. We appreciate you following along. Thank you for all the comments and all the appreciation. We love it. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Be sure to join us next week as we approach a brand new topic. And church on Sunday. We have church at 9, 11, and 6.30 at night. Sunday. Sunday. Not Saturday, Sunday. 6025 Moravia Park Drive. See you. Hallelujah. <laughs>